Jacks. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to our land use hearing. Uh, it's June 19th. The hearing is a Z0067-19-HL. And I'll call the order the meeting. Uh, and please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I always turn around and look to see if the audience is ready. By the way, yesterday was Juneteenth. Yeah. Was what? Juneteenth. Juneteenth? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, before we begin, I, oh, we already did that. At this hearing, we will consider an application by Brian Pester and Diana McGowan for property located at 11315 South Bremer Road near Canby. The applicant is requesting removal of the historic landmark overlay designation. The hearing today will proceed as follows. <coughs> First, from staff, presenta uh, uh, staff presentation by senior planner Martha Fritzi. The application applicant will have up to 20 minutes to present. Next, I'll open the hearing for public testimony. Then, representatives of recognized community organizations. Finally, other people wishing to testify. The board will then deliberate and either render a decision today or set a time of decision later. Assistant in today's hearing is our clerk, Kevin Moss, senior planner, Martha, planner Martha Fritzi, and assistant county counsel, Nate Boderman. If you wish to testify, I don't know why I'm reading this. There's nobody here, but I'll read it anyway. If you wish to testify, please complete one of the green cards and give it to Kevin. Everyone wishing to speak on this matter will have an opportunity. Now begin the hearing with a legal statement by Nate Boderman, followed by a staff report Mar by Martha Fritzi. If I could dispense with the statement, I would, but it's required by statute, so here we go. Today is the time set for public hearing for the previously identified application. This is a quasi-judicial land use hearing. So first, all the criteria that can be used in reaching a decision have been identified in the staff report. Second, failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker or the parties an opportunity to respond may preclude appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals on that particular issue. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to the posed conditions of approval with su sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Once final, these decisions may be appealed to the Land Use Board of Appeals. And this time, I'll ask the Board of Commissioners if you have any ex parte contacts, bias, or conflicts of interest that you would like to indicate. Nope. Nope. If anyone wishes to challenge the impartiality of any commissioner, please clearly indicate your intention to do so in any written or oral testimony. And that concludes the required written statement. All right, with that, we'll turn it over for a presentation. throwing me off. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Martha Fritzi, a senior planner with the county's planning and zoning division, and I am going to um, just talk real briefly about what the proposal is today. It's fairly straightforward. Um, what we are looking at under file Z0067-19 is a zone change to remove the historic landmark overlay on a property that once contained the Calif, um, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Calif water tower. Um, the site is zoned EFU exclusive uh, farm use with the historic landmark overlay. Um, nothing about this proposal would change the EFU zoning. It simply would be removing the historic landmark overlay. Um, the site is, that's a huge typo, is located on Bremer Road. Um, and the total site is roughly 20 acres. So just very briefly, um, the Caliph Water Tower was designated as a historic landmark in 1993. Um, it went through a goal five process like all of our historic landmarks. At the time it was designated, it was noted to be in very poor um, and or deteriorated condition, but was um, such, had such unique architectural features that um, it met the bare minimum um, score that it needed to meet to be designated as an historic landmark, and it was designated as such. Um, over time, 
the water tower became overgrown with some sort of tree or shrub. And when the current applicants bought the property in 2017, uh, the water tower was a pile of rubble. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is um, an older photo before it was designated in 1984 of what the water tower looked like. And then you can see by 2007 it was already completely overgrown. Um, and then these are pictures uh, from the applicant in 2017 when they bought the property and then 2019 when they cleared everything away where the water tower was. Um, I mentioned it met... It, it, received the bare minimum 40 points um, score that it needed at the time to be designated as a historic landmark. And so section 707 of our zoning ordinance contains the criteria for designating historic landmarks. Um, there is a scoring system based on specific architectural, environmental, and um, other historic association criteria. And every um, structure needs to go through the scoring and um, score at least 40 points based on that to be designated. Um, obviously, if the structure is no longer there, it can no longer meet any sort of score at all. Um, and so it can't achieve any score under this criteria and therefore is not, it's not appropriate to be designated as an historic landmark anymore. Um, and so technically, this is a zone change. When we look at a zone change, we have to look at our zone change criteria uh, found in section 1202 of the ZDO. The very first one is that the proposed zone change is consistent with the applicable goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. In this case, we look to chapter nine, um, where it talks about uh, designating uh, or zoning properties with the historic landmark overlay, which are de determined to be significant based on the criteria. Obviously, this cannot, can no longer be determined to be significant under the criteria, um, and therefore, it's no longer appropriate for the overlay to be um, on the property. And the rest of the zone change criteria relate to service provision um, and impacts the transportation system. Obviously, um, those are not really relevant here because nothing about this type of zone change would change anything about um, what could or could not be developed on the property. It's simply removing the overlay, the historic landmark overlay. And so the Historic Review Board held a public meeting um, on March 9th. No real significant issues came up at this meeting. They voted unanimously to recommend approval of Z0067-19, the removal of the historic landmark overlay. Um, and staff also recommends um, approval of Z0067-19, the removal of the historic landmark overlay. Um, and staff, because staff finds that the overlay zone is no longer appropriate for the subject site. And that's it. Do you Any have questions? questions? Nope. <clears throat> this, uh, we could have had Captain Obvious out here and solve this in a couple minutes. Uh, so I will read this. I will open a public hearing and ask if anyone would like to testify on this matter. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And. Ask, ask if there's a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve Z0067-19-HL as recommended by the Historic Review Board and staff. Second. I moved and seconded that we remove the, uh, I've got to find it, I lost it somehow. We move to uh, approve the Z0067-19-HL as recommended by the Historic Review Board and staff. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, it has been moved. On. Let's see where there's no further. Okay, if there's. Okay, I guess right at the very bottom. Right there. If the motion is approved, now that the requests have been approved, I will direct staff to draft an ordinance. Yeah, I was just going to let you finish it. Okay. <laughs> now that the request has been approved, I'll direct staff to draft an ordinance reflecting today's decision included on the agenda for the board adoption at a future business meeting. And with that, I'll close the hearing. Twelve minutes. Thank you. Um, Actually, less because we started a little bit late. Yeah, we, did start we started late. one minute late. Eleven minutes and twenty seconds. Great. Wow. All right. Got to phone this one in.